stand in for His Worship the Mayor. Council, please note that at this meeting we recorded a subsequent broadcast by the authority internet site. The images and sound recorded may also be used for training purposes within the authority. The public seating areas will be in view of the cameras on my entering the chamber and using the public seating area. Members of the public are consenting to be filmed and to the possible use of these images and sound recordings as outlined above. We go on to the agenda now. Agenda number one, apologies for absence. Mr Julia Reynolds. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Lee Davis is stuck in traffic, but he is on the way. We'll be here shortly. And Councillor Jerry Davis uh, can't make it tonight. Any, any others? No. Uh, going to item number two, declaration of interest. Uh, please note sections A and B. We have none. Uh, we'll go into the open session. Uh, we'll go for the minutes um, from 3A to 3I. Have some move then, please. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I move the accuracy of those minutes. I second, Mr. Mayor. Can we put, put that to the vote, please? Thank you, that's been carried. We've got the committee reports now. Item number four, pathway to work project, and it's Councillor Chris Davis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm pleased to obviously introduce this report and I'd like to lay thanks to officers across the council within children's services, education, human resources and the employability team within the regeneration department for their passion, commitment and dedication to the work around the pathway to work for looked after young people and care leavers. I think this is an amazing example of how to and how our corporate parenting responsibilities across the council can be delivered together. Corporate Parenting Board and the Head of Children's Services have championed this work and with the Cabinet, Scrutiny and Full Council will continue to monitor its progress and no doubt its success. The Children's Commissioner, uh, Dr Sally Holland, has set out the challenge to the Welsh Government and all local authorities in Wales in her strategy, Hidden Ambitions. And this work comes under the theme about creating opportunities within the family business, namely the Council for care experienced young people. Um, I'm proud that this is a huge step forward in us responding to um, and achieving the challenges within the Hidden Ambitions report and what we are doing uh, with regards to this uh, strategy, uh, obviously in other areas of the Council's work as well. Members will note that the integrated care fund monies have been secured to employ a fixed term mentoring and support officer to assist our young people access and succeed in these opportunities. Members will note 4.1 of the report details the targets and outcomes for the project. Um, members will also read at section five that sustainability of the funding for this is going to be an issue and a challenge for us moving forward. I'd welcome the support across the chamber for this work moving forward. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to say this report is very timely in that it followed the corporate parenting report presented to Cabinet and Council last month, and obviously the Council's corporate work experience policy, which was approved last year. Um, updated members' training on our roles and responsibilities around corporate parenting is be arranged, being rearranged for next month, 
and I look forward to seeing active participation and attendance from all members to this workshop. Um, Appendix 2 of the report details the work opportunities policy for young people in and leaving our care. Um, I think, just like to say in closing, I'd hope members uh, are and will be as excited as I am about this work and the opportunities it'll of offer our young people, the young people that we are all the corporate parents, and parents for. So therefore, subject to any questions or comments, I'd like to take members to the recommendations of the report that are contained on page 43, uh, recommendation 2.1 that the report be noted, and recommendation that the proposed policy, which can be found at Appendix 1, also be moved. And as I said, subject to any questions or comments, I so move. I second, Mr. Mayor. Members, any questions? Uh, my, my question relates to the ongoing work after 2021 and whether any contingency has already been looked at to cover those uh, 32 years period, please. Um, work has been taking place via the corporate parenting group, so that Deb Newton and Annabel Lloyd have been working together on a future plan. Um, so there are things afoot that obviously the detail is not within this report, but there are things going on with regards to future funding as well. Any more questions? If not, any comments? Can we go to the vote then, please? Thank you, that's complete and carried. Thank you. We've gone to item number five. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, obviously, I'm delighted uh, with the corporate management team's support to bring this report to full council tonight. Members will be aware from previous reports on the work that's been undertaken to reconfigure children's services. We've adopted a model to invest additional resources into the front door obviously and into the Council's intervention and prevention services within children's services. However, despite this, we're still seeing a high demand for statutory children's services. Our staff, as the report indicates, are working excessive hours. There's been a reliance on agency staff to meet demand. During times, we've been recruited into permanent posts and we've been trying to manage sick sickness and leave requests, including quite a significant amount of parental leave requests and children's services. This report and the business case to corporate management team is an attempt to ease the pressures on social work teams and support the delivery and to increase the resilience within our permanency service area of children's services. This is to ensure that the council meets its statutory duties under the Social Services and Wellbeing Act. Um, I welcome and applaud this approach by officers, not only as an invest to save model, but as a creative way to support our social work teams during periods of high demand. Section four sets out the business case uh, for, for this report. Um, and I'd like to draw members' attention to 4.10 of the report and just read it to you, because I think this really captures and summarizes what we are intending to do. And the service proposes to recruit two full-time social workers on fixed term contracts for 24 months to work as peripatetic social workers between the two teams that's obviously the family support team and the children look after CLA team, which is um, included as um, appendix one, if members uh, wish to see where the resource is proposed to be targeted. Um, these are the teams where we have peak demand as outlined in the section four of the report, the business case. What this um, will allow us to do is support us in reducing caseload sizes, excessive staff hours, and will facilitate improvement of our work the costs are indicated for year one and year two. Uh, and as you can see, um, it's been proposed this is an effective uh, way of rebalancing our <coughs> agency spend, obviously within the directorate, which is a challenge that I've given to the director and the senior management team to look at as part of budget and efficiency savings. Um, I'd like to thank um, the officers for this report and I'd welcome um, 
the encouraging approach to best meet the needs of our children, young people and their families and hope the councillors will support this. So subject to any questions and comments, I'd like to take members to the recommendations which are contained on page 57. They are recommendations 2.1 that the content of the report be noted and at 2.2 the proposals that the children's services recruit two full-time peripatetic social workers be supported and obviously again subject to any questions and comments Mr Mayor I so move. And I second Mr Mayor. Members any questions? <coughs> Councillor Carter. Thanks Mr Mayor. Just, just a quick question. With regard, I appreciate what Chris is saying about investing to save. Why, why are we offering them on a 24-month contract rather than a permanent basis, if that's the case? I think the feeling was that initially we may not make a saving, so we're putting a request in for sort of growth, which is in the report. Um, Obviously, if it's successful, then we will make the saving. So we want to be able to come back in the two years' time and show there's been a success and then maybe ask for it to be a permanent um, change to the structure. But we wanted to try it first. Councillor Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I've got two questions. On page 58, and the 3.3, it says the council has a duty to comply with the Social Care Wales Code of Practice for Social Care Employers. Under 3.4, it says there are examples of staff informing the service that are times when they feel overwhelmed due to caseload size. How does this situation then tie in with the stress at work policy that the council have? And I think we adopted that sometime last week. So as you'll be aware, the council undertook a stress survey last year. Um, it was one of these areas was identified as staff at risk of suffering with work-related stress. An action plan was then put in place with those staff and mindfulness sessions were offered to those staff within the service areas. So there is ongoing support for those staff within those service areas. And then if we're offered, um, if any staff come forward needing more um, support, then that will be offered as well. And currently, uh, Mr Mayor, are there any members of staff involved in these two teams on sick leave? We're aware the staff have just returned from sick leave within the service areas, yes. But there isn't anybody off with stress specifically. Um, <coughs> can I then take you to um, 4.8? where the first sentence there says there is currently a bulge in numbers of looked after children that is creating additional demand. Um, I think it would have been preferable if we could have had some numbers in there. So can we have any, any indication of what numbers we are talking about as opposed to, opposed to the word bulge? I think it, it's difficult to put figures to these things because there has been an increase in the numbers of children looked after and I'll give Lisa time to think because she may be able to tell you over a period of time just what that increase is but what we've had is some cases for example where uh, families have moved in from other areas completely unexpectedly with very very clear problems and we have to react to that so we've had a couple of similar cases to that um, and some of those families will have more than one child, so we have to deal with that. So when we talk about a bulge, it's not necessarily about numerically being a bulge. It's about a demand on the service that wasn't expected. There's still a process in place around prevention, which is supposed to be trying uh, on a, on a long-term basis to bring down the numbers of looked-after children. But particularly when families move in, our prevention work can't help with that because they may be in crisis by the time they move in. Now, I don't know if Lisa is able to just say what the recent um, increase in children looked after is, but I hope that's some help in explaining that term, rather. I, th I think if you recall, we had the lack reduction strategy back last year, and it's run for a couple of years. Um, and back last, I think it was sort of about eight months ago, the figures were about 131, our lack figures. Uh, currently, we're at about 200. So we've seen a huge impact 
we had a real increase in August last year. We then had another peak in November last year, and those numbers haven't reduced. Um, we've had we had some large families moving into the area, which obviously impacted on our figures considerably percentage-wise, because we had two families that were number of 18 children in total, I think. Um, and that really impacted on us, because for us, that's, you know, small numbers, you know, is really a big increase. Um, the, the two teams that we're talking about, the family support team do all the court work. So those cases that progress through the court who then become looked after, they do the bulk of that sort of preparatory work within the court arena. And then once the child is placed in looked after and the plan is made to determine as it moves across the looked after children team, um, and obviously that's where we're seeing the impact. Um, so that, that's where the growth will be. Thank you for that answer. It really clarifies the uh, question I was asking. Um, under 410, the, that refers to the costs in year one, 93,000 plus, and year two, 98,000 plus. Has that been factored into, is this part of the additional demands, um, uh, or is it, is it in the medium-term financial plan? Uh, no because um, it is the intention that hopefully that that cost would be recouped out of that agency cost. So that's what we're looking to do in going forward and hoping that that is going to happen. But at this point in time, no, we haven't factored that in um, into, into, into next year. Well, that leads me on to one or two other questions and to um, add to what comes to the Carter's question, please. Um, out there, to my knowledge, there are not hundreds of um, fully qualified social workers um, available to recruit from throughout the, the country. Um, are you anticipating sufficient applications? And do you consider that employing them for 24 months is the answer? And taking into account that during that 24 months, any one of these two are likely to apply for permanent positions elsewhere. Yeah, <coughs> difficult question. You are right. There are not a huge amount of social workers out there who are looking for work. Um, I think what I will say is NERF has been quite successful in recruiting certainly newly qualified social workers. Um, we've never failed any current advert out that we have people applying. So when we do have vacancies, we do fill them quite successfully or have done in the past. Um, we've recruited some agencies. Um, those that are good, we obviously encourage to stay. So this might be an incentive for having a two-year contract for an agency to, to stay on a permit for a permanent basis. But also, uh, if we can try newly qualified social workers out, they then gain the experience and then potentially moving across a permanent post. Um, so it is a way of us testing some and plus giving some newly qualified some experience. So we are hopeful that we will fill those vacancies. My understanding, Mr. Mayor, is that the, these officers are under, working under stressful conditions continuously, day in, day out. And if they're overwhelmed with the uh, size of their workload, um, you know, the, to appoint fixed term course I think is uh, going to cause um, some difficulty, in my view. Mr. Mayor, can I just uh, go make a comment? Uh, we discussed it from a corporate management team, and obviously the 24-month contract was to limit the exposure of risk to the authority first. We need to go out and see if we can recruit to that. Obviously, if, if that pre presents a challenge, we can always take a, a, a viewed position on that. With regards to the longer term employability then in terms of uh, if this is successful we'll know within the first 12 months if it's going to be successful i would suggest and we could also come back and have a conversation again with councillors in respect of what we want to do next and that doesn't preclude us having a conversation with those staff to say well look this is a working concept we'll be looking to make them permanent following conversations subject council approval potentially but we we wanted to it was a pragmatic way forward to start Paragraph 4.9 it is. Is there an up-to-date increase in costs available at this point in time? 
um, the win quote it is uh, from month seven. I don't have the current figure with me, but I can make that available to you. Are there any more questions? Because yes, it's in relation yes. to the recommendation that the 2.2 uh, because it says there, the proposal that children's services recruit two full-time peripatetic social workers be supported. It doesn't mention anything there about fixed term. I th we could probably amend it if it makes everybody feel more comfortable. I, I think it's probably inherent that it is as recommended in the report. Um, but if it, if it makes people feel more comfortable, I'm sure that Councillor Chris Davis would agree to including um, the, the words... Uh, on a fixed term two-year contract. But I think it's important, Mr. Mayor, if we're passing a resolution, that that is quite <coughs> clear. Because when I first read that, I thought, oh, it's two permanent posts. But then you don't find that out until you read the rest of the report. Councillor Davis, are you happy to include that? Mr. Mayor, my apologies for it not being clear in the recommendation. I'm happy that uh, the word in for a fixed term period of two years be added to the recommendation. Uh, Councillor Farrell. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. So I, don't, I don't mean we harp, harp on about this permanency thing. The wind quite sit quite well to me. I just want to touch on what Ellis said, if you can clarify what the risk is you're talking about. Well, the concept here is uh, to add two new peripatetic uh, social workers. Obviously, if that wasn't working out as the service anticipated and wasn't a benefit if we made them fixed if they were permanent members of staff we'd be faced with having uh, two posts that we actually didn't envisage working in the, the way they are working so it, would, it was from that aspect because this is a new concept that we would limit the risk and exposure to the authority by making them fixed terms of staff but we pay into the agency agency staff at the moment though so i i don't see what the risk is but that's just me i suppose eh? The idea is that these people will mean it's not necessary to have the agency staff, but you may, if our strategies are all working, you may not need these pe these people on a longer term basis because we have a, a prevention agenda which should reduce the children looked after population. So what you're doing is ensuring that rather than taking on people who at that point you may have to make redundant, what you will have is people who have a fixed term contract which may be able to end in two years because we've had a successful reduction in the numbers of people, uh, numbers of young people looked after. So we don't know if that's going to work, but that's the ambition. And so we're reducing the risk to the authority of either having to keep on employing agency because we're so over overstretched um, as against having to employ somebody permanent who may then not be needed in the future. Are there any more questions? Are there any comments? Councillor Jones? I just don't want to belabor this point, but I hopefully that the questions that both myself and Councillor Carter have asked will be taken into account because um, the very fact, uh, Mr. Mayor, that we've got three, I think it's at least three agency uh, members who are social workers already in the department, and those are the figures we saw quite recently. On top of this, we'll have two fixed term uh, appointments for a, for a department that is, you know, really under the spotlight <coughs> every minute of every day that they are, they are working. And I have a feeling that you're very likely to be coming back to us to review this particular resolution of fixed term posts. Councillor Davis. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just, just an observation, really, in terms of um, social social work our some of our most vulnerable families in in the county borough um, rely on this support therefore we need to make sure that we've got a skill set of, of professional practitioners going out and supporting our families um, in terms of succession planning there's 
I agree with my fellow councillor. There is um, a, a problem across Wales in terms of the lack of social workers. So what we really need to consider is that the succession planning for future years um, and look at models of good practice around maybe looking at support workers in addition to social workers who then come in on a level three health and social and then progress doing their social qualifications in-house so we then grow in our own social social workers so i would like to see you know that sort of progression and succession planning being thought of for future future years um but in general i i'm in full support of the two two additional workers to provide that additional support to the families that need it in our country borough. Is there anyone else going to comment before I call Councillor Davison? Councillor Davison. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I just wanted to say a few things and welcome, obviously, the questions from, uh, from members. This is a slightly different approach, uh, and change is always different. different change is always a, a, a challenge but what I really welcome about this is this provides a solution to currently the demand that the council is facing in these areas and I commend the officers for bringing that what what this um, allows I think within this service where there are pressures at what I describe as our engine house the family support team and our children looked after team which obviously provide the long-term care management support to the children that we are corporate parents for is a flexibility within this service to recruit two peripatetic roles which is unusual but i really really applaud as i said in my preamble this approach by this council to offer that flexibility i think and offer the commitment to this council to obviously an area of our service that is really swamped at the moment that bulge that uh, we talk about in the in the report case on sizes are, are high and what this approach allows us to do is to build some capacity into this structure to support um, our children young people support our social workers and support support our managers to deliver a first quality service to uh, the to, to the children and young people we have a duty to support i just wanted to pick up uh, 24 months actually for some agency workers actually could be an attractive uh, model as someone who's worked um, and is qualified as a social worker you know the commitment for agency contracts are sometimes three six nine months at the very most this actually for an experienced social worker could be really attractive and we would then actually build a lot of potential experience into into the service i just wanted to pick up on councillor jago's um, comment about grow our own i'm really proud to actually to say this council for a number of years has adopted an approach of grow our own social workers where we actually one of very few authorities that open up the opportunity for staff to go on the social work program not just to children's services we offer it up to other staff in the authority and actually to our partners in the third sector it's just something that we are doing really well where support workers and unqualified staff have actually gone on to the actually university program and more recently the open university program to qualify and what we tend to do then is this council doesn't struggle to actually retain social work staff because you know they really experienced before they actually qualify social workers because they've worked and qualified in a, a range of different roles so i just wanted to say councillor jones we may be coming back to you um but if we do come back to you it's because we actually need to protect our children young people and there's a growth in the system and i would hope that should that be the case the council would support our corporate parenting duties and responsibilities and our statutory responsibilities under the social services and well-being act to actually support and protect our children young people and families in this county borough can we put that to the vote there please that's complete and carried Item six, seven, and eight, information reports. So we move on to uh, item number nine. Councillor Litton. Can I move to section 100, please, Mr. Mayor? Is there a second for that, please? I second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Can we put that to vote, please?
okay let's complete and carry it we'll now we'll go back into the open session and close every outside and come in um, we're going to item number 12 do you really need to jump in it i have some i have something first week i got is a council lease submitting uh, Mayor, shouldn't the pub, I don't know if there's any public there, shouldn't they come back in? Yeah, uh, the Mayor's interested. I, uh, sorry, I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't hear it. Sorry. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, just for colleagues, uh, in relation to some media that's been going on in the last couple of days, there's been a lot of media attention um, in relation to school children returning from half term uh, leave last week and also for teachers as well um, uh, countries that they visited especially with the recent news in the last 24 hours about issues in uh, Italy etc I just wanted to reassure my colleagues that my chief education officer in fairness got onto that straight away and has sent out a letter to all pupils and carers governing bodies as well just in, in relation to the public health information around the coronavirus and if those have returned from countries which are now declared um, in the, in the priority list, Northern Italy and certain towns is one of those that obviously they self-isolate for a period of time and let the uh, health service know. But I just wanted to reassure colleagues that we had said that information out. We do have some children who are due uh, to travel to certain areas with school trips over the next couple of weeks, especially with Easter break imminent as well. And we will just evaluate that as the days go on. And obviously we won't put any of our pupils at risk, but we will take on board public health information. Thank you. I have another item, uh, go to Councillor Andrew Barry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, late report, apologies for the uh, lateness of the report, but as you can imagine, uh, officers and uh, political groups have been frantic trying to get this together off the back of uh, the storms we've had. It's the uh, local authorities' hardship scheme. A major incident was declared in South Wales following Storm Dennis on the, on the weekend of the 15th of February. This was the second storm in less than a week. The st uh, storm Dennis resulted in some areas receiving 160 millimetres of rain, rainfall in 48 hours with major concentrations in the Taff catchment area. Uh, approximately 300 homes, several businesses have been affected. Uh, the impact is seen as significant. Uh, and at that stage, I'll, I'll pay tribute to the staff of, of this authority it seems to be when it comes to our backs against the wall, we, we do come together and also councillors as well. Um, the community itself is facing significant hardship, obviously, uh, given the urgent requirement to establish and publicise a fund to help the community. The decision to create the fund was taken by the interim chief exec in consultation with a section 151 officer uh, and group leaders, uh, deputy leaders of all parties. Um, the hardship fund will offer £500 to each residential home and £1,000 to each business affected by flooding. Uh, it is projected that the total cost to the council will not exceed £200,000 and the money is identified from earmark reserves. The recommendation is simply a 2.1. The actions to alleviate hardship of the Murphy Tidbury residents taken by the interim chief executive in consultation with section 151 officer and group leaders Deputy leaders of all parties be ratified. I move, Mr. Mayor. I second, me, Mr. Mayor, and with your uh, diligence, if I could just mention the fact that uh, I think it needs to be said that uh, to thank those uh, involved with the effort since last Sunday, uh, certainly the emergency services, but there was a real team effort from this council, from team council, uh, Murphy Tidville, uh, from officers, from all elected members, from frontline staff, from volunteers and the communities pulled together. And it was great to see the best in both compassion, kindness and support for each other. That's what makes Murphy Tidville great. Uh, also, I'm delighted to say that uh, our elected members, our AM and MP support, and also for MP Gerald Jones, who spoke at Westminster yesterday and uh, pitched our calls there yesterday. That's true team spirit. And that's when we do things better together. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, Mr. Rogers. I endorse all that's been said, and I support it 100%. But what I find as well is when we receive information, we don't get enough detail. Now, I know what has happened in the borough, roughly. I know Pond Stickett has closed, Lisa. 
from Pant End because of a, a landslip, etc. But I think we should have more detail of the areas that happen in Merthyr Tidville. What is it? You know, I, that's the only sort of thing I, I, I'm concerned about. But you have a, you have a detail, so and so, so and so. But I don't really know, really. But I know now because um, a massive amount of transport, everything that turned up in, uh, up in Pant, they're taking a park over there. And of course, the roads are closed into uh, Ponsecker. But that's all I ask. I, I support this, obviously, I support it. But when you send out to elected members, can you give us a little bit more detail, say where or something, or what has happened? Actually, don't, you don't really know uh, why. But it, 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 say it in Ponsecker. Now, I've been told now. I got a message in Ponsecca, I've been a, a, a Kevin boy originally, I think. It's the other side of the fun and join under the bridge, you tell me, just on the road there. And the other ones are not looking very dodgy, down the other side. So I don't know if they'll be, uh, <laughs> I met one this morning from Ponsecca, a great mate of mine, but there you are. So come here, have some more detail. Like, say if, if there's something there, say what it is, and I'll be very grateful to you. Thank you very much. C Councillor Rogers, if I could, Montreal officer, as well. I just need to say that, Councillor Rogers, that's absolutely fine, and I'm sure we will be able to convey those sorts of details to you, but that's not what this report is about. This report is specifically for the purposes of approving the fund. So that, that's absolutely take on board your point, and I'm sure we will be able to do that in a later report, but this report is just about approving the fund. Whatever you do in life, you've got to be opportunistic. You've got to get in. <laughs> it, it, if you don't get in, you get out. Now, I've had a quiet night tonight. I've sent, I've sent a, a, a message out. I'm looking for the leader. I know where he's gone. I don't know. But if anybody see him, give me a ring or let me know. And, and I'll, uh, I'll be very grateful to you. So, so just to make that point, there's something you've got to be get in. And if you don't get in, you get out as an elected member. Thank you very much. Uh, Mountain officer, if 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 I may, um, Tony, you you literally tickled me for there now. I'm trying to keep a straight face, but uh, you know th th this was a very serious issue. And, and please, yeah. I'm going to take the opportunity just to reassure you, if I can, because um, obviously I, I deputised as I should do um, for the leader last week, and working with the executive team as well, we tried to get out as much comms as possible to the to the um, to the councillors and to the councillors on the um, on the email. There was a lot of. Uh, traffic through social media as well, trying to get out there to tell people that road's closed, that road's closed, this is still flooded, etc. So what I can say is that I think there was a fantastic effort, as the leader has alluded to, in relation to any, everyone, and we did try to get as much out as to councillors as possible. We found ourselves in, as I said, unprecedented times. Um, just to reiterate, eight landslides altogether. In my ward, particularly, we have the big issue in relation to the pant exit from Ponsticke. Uh, regarding the landslide of Fun and Doyne there. Um, there are still concerns about the Ponsan Road to uh, Spanish House, and we're assessing that. Our engineer is flat out at the moment doing that. And I've also got three landslides on the Taft Trail as well, as well as our two uh, in the lower borough as well with, uh, with Troy Drew specifically. So thank you for that observation. As I said, you know, we did endeavour to do as much as we can, but we will take those points on board as well. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Councillor Roberts. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Obviously, echo everything that's been said before me. Um, when I had the call from Lisa about this, I was, you know, really pleased that the local authority were um, looking at the hardship scheme um, in line with other local authorities. Um, unfortunately, you know, if you've been affected, um, if you're one of the unfortunate residents that's been affected by this flood. £500 isn't going to go very far, but it is there to help out where it can. Um, obviously, there are some <coughs> residents that are not insured, and I'm sure that £500 will go a long way um, towards helping those residents. Um, it was unprecedented, the rainfall. Um, there's the, the actual spirit of residents. Um, everybody pulled together in a time where they needed to. The support on social media, uh, second to none, the amount of fundraising groups that's gone on, there's been bucket <coughs> collections outside stores and everything. So it really does show that um, the, the, the good people of Merthyr Tidville do pull together. But I am really, really pleased that the local authority has um, introduced this hardship scheme for the residents that's been affected. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I just want to um, pick up on the actual online system for applying. It's really detailed, but it's really straightforward. And it's really easy for the, uh, the residents that are affected to apply for the five million pound. It's whoever designed it. Thank you very much. Are there any more comments? Okay, Deputy Speaker Wardner, please. That's completely carried. I'd like Dan over to the leader now. Yeah. He's done it. Oh, he's already done it. Uh, we're going to item number 13. Do you receive communication from your worship, the mayor? I haven't, so thank you, lads. Have a good evening. Thank you very much.